Oh, hello, hello. Uh, checking in with chapters 67 to 82. 82 of The Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which, hey, has a little story in it. The, 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 the dog and the dragon story, which I actually enjoyed. It's just this little story in the thing of a dog who looks up in the sky one day and sees a dragon and says, I want to become a dragon. And so it's living on a farm. It decides it's going to divide it up into three things of, of getting scales of, uh, of, um, getting, learning how to speak like a dragon, like in the human voice, but a great roaring voice, uh, and being able to fly. And, uh, for the, um, for the scales, it decides to get seeds, but to do seeds, it needs to, uh, it, the dog needs to learn how to plant plants, water the plants on this farm. And the farmer's like, whoa, this is pretty cool. Uh, and he, he does this and he harvests it and he rolls around in the seeds and he shows himself off amongst the other dogs and the other dogs just make fun of him and say like, you're just covered in seeds. You're just ridiculous. It's like go back to being a dog. And he's kind of disheartened. And then the next thing he does is he um, is he he decides to learn how to try and how to talk. And he observes the farmer's youngest a little infant, and you know as, as it's learning to speak words. But it finds it cannot just physically its mouth cannot do that. Mouth throat can't do that. But it notices that the uh, daughter is learning how to write, and so it learns how to write like you know draw things in the dirt and uh shows the other dogs but they can't read and they think you're just being ridiculous that's not speaking that's that's doing you know dumb stuff and so he's like ah crap and then for the final thing of like flying it goes to the barn and it sees a pulley system and he hooks something to it that's about his weight and he, he uh, wigs up kind of a harness thing and he gets all the other dogs to come. He, he attaches himself to the harness and he leaps off and he slowly kind of floats to the floor, kind of counterbalanced by this weight. And the other dogs make fun of him and say, you didn't fly, you just fell slowly. You know, what a ridiculous dog you are. It's completely dumb, dumbass. And he hears yelling and he runs out. And it's like the whole farmer family is by the well and it hears this faint gurgling cry and they're bewailing because the, uh, the, the little infant has fallen in the well and they can't get in the well. It's a narrow well. And he suddenly, he knows what to do. And so he grabs the pail, kind of thrusts it up, gets, gets, puts the, kind of gets, um, clamps onto the thing, it's a harness, drags, Rates in the earth, lower me, uh, and jumps jumps into the well. They lower him again. The hinge, he fishes out the little the fishes out the little um, infant, uh, and gets him back up. And they're like, "Wow, what an amazing dog!" And like they give him a place of honor at the, at the at the kitchen at the table while all the other dogs are outside getting wet in the barn, and give him a special treat. And he's snuggling down in his thing. And he thinks at the end of the day, I'm an abject failure. I didn't get to be, I didn't failed at being a dragon whatsoever. And that's the story. And this is the story that Wit tells Kaladin. And Kaladin's like, what kind of hell of a story is that? It's like, well, it's, <laughs> and, um, it was like, wait a minute. This is a story to, to say that I put up impossibly high standards for myself and that uh, <clears throat> put up impossibly high standards for myself and I'm making myself miserable and I've actually accomplished amazing things. It's like, you're dumbass. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, no. I, my, my stories do not have any points. They're just stories. And, you know, if there's anything there other than that, it's like, it's not to do with me. I just tell stories. Very much Brandon sanderson E. Uh, so yeah, that was the enjoyable little cohesive little part of, um, these many, many chapters of this long ass, big ass, giant ass story. Um, 
And Shadesmar Shalen has discovered that, ah, actually, um, he was afraid that Pattern had betrayed her. This little, their spren that she's had for all this time that she actually called forth and actually killed her, killed her mother with, um, um, who was being very abusive. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> actually wasn't being abusive. Well, was be cheating on, there's lots of nasty stuff happening with her family. Um, but it turns out like, well, I, he was in the sense of he was accessing the thing, but not to talk to Marin, but to talk to Wit because he's worried about Shailin. Um, but Shailin, Wit had spies, sp there's spies around Wit who then fed the information to M Marin. So it's like, ah, fuck. Um, Marin finally does reveal what his nefarious plans here are because the judge comes to, uh, to judge the, the big case of, uh, of, um, uh, Aelin, uh, you know, him trying to go on trial for the thing. And it turns out that the judge is a herald, a immortal being. And that, you know, who's been trapped on this planet, which I assume means he's like an earthling who's just gotten kind of immortality and just wants to get the fuck off here is very much a flawed human being character. Who's, virtually immortal and they want to, um, them to stab him, uh, and trap him in a, uh, trap him in a, in a thing so that they can kind of question him. <sighs> and, you know, Morin's like, oh, you know, we want to do it for this and that, but he also offers Shailen lots of power and stuff like that. And, you know, you can join the brotherhood full time and get to have a say and, uh, Shailen is apparently falling for this bullshit, which, you know, is somewhat disheartening and that, um, yeah, yeah. There's other stuff happening. Uh, Kaladin, not Kaladin, uh, Dal, Daligan, Dal, the King guy, <laughs> D, uh, has discovered, oh yeah, yeah. They've taken over the, um, they've taken over the big place where his wife is and Ka Kaladin is, and it's like, ah, fuck. So we have to figure out how to get, get, break him out in there. So hopefully they're going to do that. Um, he, he, wow, uh, it's, he gets taken there by the storm father and they rescue Kaladin. Who's, who's basically, you know, completely wasted after having fought, um, not you, not being able to use very much of his powers using this, the cool handy glove that had gotten introduced earlier that was using weights and counterweights to kind of counterfeit his usual lashings, uh, ways of pulling himself through the, the air. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's God damn it. I think I'm at, at hour 44, so I'm doing pretty good. It goes to 57. So I've only got like a full novel left, but, uh, I think I've got seven, seven days left on, uh, this, this particular, um, <clears throat> on my, uh, on my, uh, this, this is a library loan of an audiobook, So I'm, I'm doing pretty well and I'm, I'm pretty, I'm actually glad I've got this kind of a hard, 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 um, deadline. Cause it's forcing me to go through it quickly, which I think is basically the only way you can get through stuff like this, or the only way I can get through stuff like this. Um, yeah, so I enjoy, I really enjoyed that little simple story, uh, in there. I could remember it. I, it, it's, I fully encompassed it. It has a beginning, middle and end, and it's got a point. Um, and you know, it's, it's Anderson winking at the audience, all the stuff that I actually quite liked. Maybe I'll just review that when I get to the end of this, because, uh, God knows if I can remember much else. All right. I will leave it there. More videos later.